If you're looking for a super compact, extremely versatile, ridiculously sharp, aggressively priced, all-in-one travel lens, one lens because you want to buy a bunch of lenses, I would tell you normally that doesn't exist, but now it does. It's the 20 to 70 f4 from Sony. Now this isn't a lens that anybody asked for, and when you hear 20 to 70 f4, it doesn't really sound like anything amazing. But going on a trip, I'm forcing myself to shoot with this lens. Very much changed my mind, and by the end of this video, I think your mind will be changed as well. Disclaimer up front: Sony will not get to see this video or hear this video before it's posted. Everything I say is like actually what I think about this lens. No one's really dabbled in the 20 to 70 territory before. This is completely brand new for Sony. And at 20 mil, it just opens up the possibilities of shooting a lot more than you can typically shoot at 24. It opens up the potential to shoot things like architecture much wider, landscape shots where you can fit things in a bit easier. It means you can get a little bit closer to things than you typically would be able to at 24 and have a little bit of a different perspective. I personally like to shoot quite close to things wider. It just gives you a different look. And even things like vlogging at 20 mil, that is now very possible compared to 24 mil where that really wouldn't be possible. I mean, it would, it just, it's, can be pretty tight. So this is a lens designed as much for stills as it is for video. Like any of Sony's lenses that come out now, they are designed with both in mind, which means you're gonna get things like reduced breathing when it comes to shooting video. Autofocus is exactly what you'd expect from Sony. It's their latest and greatest. And it's actually a 60% faster autofocus speed and a two times better tracking performance than the 24 to 70 Mark I from Sony. Hello, little interruption there in my own video. Just to say, if you're liking what you're seeing so far, thank you for watching. Maybe try hitting the subscribe button below if you're new here, hit the plus the thumbs up thing on the way down there. And if you end up not liking anything else I post, you can just unsubscribe. There's no contract. Back to the video. I know you're gonna wanna know about sharpness and let me just put it this way with a whole bunch of images on the screen. It is a very, very sharp lens. You might even say it's too sharp for certain things. You sometimes don't want that overly sharp look. For video, it can make it look very digital. You might actually wanna add some form of filter on there for video. I didn't for any of the video you're seeing here, but just know this is a very sharp lens. Now the lens doesn't have any stabilization built into it, but if you use the active stabilization built within most Sony bodies these days, the 20 becomes the equivalent of a 22, which means it is entirely useful for vlogging. Whereas if you were to shoot with a 24 mil and have the active stabilization on, that 24 is closer to like a 26.4. It's a look like if you wanna go that way, but for me, I wouldn't use it for vlogging, it's too tight. Now, one of the big arguments here is going to be F 2.8 versus F 4. And the only way I can see this being an argument for you is in terms of if you need that background separation, that background bokeh. F 4 in low light situations with any of Sony's newer bodies, especially the FX3, the A7S3, you can go to your second base ISO, you have more than enough low light performance. I was actually shooting with the a7 IV, cranked to 10,000 ISO. Yes, there's a bit of noise. Run that through some noise reduction software and I think you'd be more than happy. The biggest thing is gonna be if you can't deal with F4 because you want it to have more background blur. Going back through all the footage that I shot and there was a lot of it, there was not one instance where I thought, I would have liked the background to have been a little bit more blurred. In my opinion, for travel style content here, you don't really wanna blur out the background hugely. You want to kind of see where you are. That's part of the appeal of vlogging wherever you are or showing travel video, travel photography. You wanna see everything in the frame. That could just be my personal opinion, but take that as you will. I literally used this lens and the Tamron 50 to 400. There was another video I was shooting as well at the same time with the 24 to 70 on the gimbal. Once I was done with that video, I just defaulted back to using the 20 to 70 for the entire trip. And there wasn't once combined with the Tamron where I thought, you know what? I need something else. As a travel lens, it really is perfect, to be honest with you. I'm going on another trip very soon and I've got to send this back to Sony, but I'm really hoping I can get my hands on it again because this is what I want to bring. Such a versatile focal range to go from 20 to 70. In terms of design, this is a G series lens. It's not a G Master, so it's not Sony's best of the best, but if you look at it side by side to a G Master, they look very, very similar. Autofocus, manual focus switch, you've got two customizable buttons, you've got a de-clicked aperture ring, you can make it clicky, you've got an iris lock on there. It's a 72 mil thread with a minimum focus distance of 25 centimeters. Extremely lightweight at 488 grams. All the focusing is done internally within the lens and it does extend via the barrel there and four inches when compressed, so it really is a tiny, tiny lens. We throw it on the body of the a7 IV here, you'll see really 
just how small that is. There is some pretty heavy vignetting at 20 millimeters, very easily correctable within the camera. In Lightroom, so no issue there. Nine blades within the lens there in terms of your aperture, your bokeh, compared to the 11 on the 24 to 70 G Master Mark II. It is technically weather sealed. There is a rubber gasket on the back there but Sony says it's not 100%. Now I will tell you that I did get it fairly wet. Sorry, Sony. To the point where I had it attached to the a7 IV and the a7 IV started giving me some weird aperture things where I'd be turning the aperture and it wouldn't adjust. The lens stayed completely fine. Put this on a different body and it was completely working okay. The a7 IV had to dry out before it started to work functionally again, but no issues with the lens. So yes, it's technically weather sealed, but just watch out, it's not 100%. Very, very impressed with what this lens can do at the price that it is being offered at. Extremely aggressive price from Sony at 10.99. Actually got some of my favorite photos I've ever shot with this lens, some of which I probably will be printing. So if you're looking for one lens to suit a variety of different needs for both photo and for video, you want it to be very sharp. You don't wanna spend a lot of money. You want it to be very travel friendly. This, without a doubt, is what you need to be looking at. Just stop looking. 20 to 70 f4 from sony you have more content coming with this lens so stay tuned for that if you're not subscribed make sure you click that button down below maybe give this a little thumbs up on the way down there and uh, i'll see you in the next one thank you sony for sending this through take care